Well, greetings all on this glorious Friday morning, and welcome to Brian's Bible Break. As we continue to unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them in uh, in His presence. This morning we are concluding this um, subject of the will of God revealed to us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we'll be reading verse 17 this morning from the New Living Translation. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day. And Lord, we just pray that you will continue to speak into our hearts, Lord, a word of encouragement and hope as we seek to do your will, as we seek your wisdom and your truth. And so, Lord, quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, that as we seek you, we will find you. And Lord, as we worship you in spirit and truth, through the way we live our lives and the words we speak, Lord, reflecting your glory and your grace, that you would guide us and uphold us in your love. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, pardon me, uh, verse 18. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you, who belong to Christ Jesus. Paul says, always be joyful, never stop praying, and finally be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Be thankful in all circumstances. That's a tough word for us today. We who face many challenges uh, as we navigate life. Some of us may be dealing with health issues. Some of us may have other troubles or challenges that are before us. And sometimes, depending on what it is we're dealing with, it can be difficult to be thankful. But Paul says, be thankful in all circumstances. So no matter what we face, we are to be thankful. Now, let's be clear. We aren't necessarily thankful for the difficulties that we're facing, but we're thankful for Jesus Christ, for his presence, for his grace, for his power that is available to us. Paul says in in Philippians chapter 4 that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That he has learned how to be joyful and thankful and content in plenty and in want. When his stomach is full and when he's hungry. In all circumstances, Paul has learned how to be content, to be thankful, to be joyful. And it's all through prayer. All through his relationship with Jesus Christ, who is the source of his power, his strength. And so Paul says, be thankful in all circumstances. So no matter what we're facing this day, we can be thankful because we know that we don't have to face those challenges alone. But in fact, we have Christ standing at our side, ready and willing and able to help us with whatever it is we're facing. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 27, all you who are heavy laden, come to me. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon upon you. And you will find rest for your weary souls. Jesus is, is ready and willing and able to help us shoulder the burdens of life that we face this day. So no matter what it is we're facing, we can be thankful because we know that Jesus will help us. We know that Holy Spirit 
our advocate, our counselor, our helper is ready and present in our lives to lead us in the way we should go and help us with the burdens that we are carrying. And so we needn't fear, we needn't be afraid, but we can be full of the joy of the Lord and we can be thankful. There's no, there's no question that, that the trials and the challenges and the troubles that people face today are real. And they are significant. But we need to lose hope. Because we are in Christ. And because we are in Christ, though we may suffer for a little while, when our appointed time is done, we will spend all eternity in his presence, in his glorious kingdom, where pain and suffering and tears are no more. And so that in itself is enough for us to be thankful. That, that we have a, a living hope that, that guides us and, and gives us strength to face this day. That even if we die today, we have hope. We have something better to look forward to. Something far greater than what we have right now. And I don't wish to die today. I don't wish anybody to die today. But if that is our appointed time, we can be thankful we can be thankful because we are in Christ. And that means that we will die once, but then we will live never to die again for all eternity in his presence. And as Paul says, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. It's far better for us to return and be with the Lord. And that day is surely coming for each one of us. For we will all die once. But for those of us who are in Christ, we will be resurrected to new life, never to die again. All because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross at Calvary and with his resurrection to new life. He set in motion the hope of glory that we all have who are in Christ. The promise of eternal life with him. And so we can be thankful in all circumstances because no matter what we face, we have the hope of glory awaiting for us and eternal life spent in Jesus' presence. And so friends, no matter what you're facing today, and, and believe me, I don't belittle any of the troubles or challenges that people face today. But whatever it is you're facing today, have hope. Be courageous. And be thankful. Because Jesus is with you. And even if you die today, because you are in Christ, it's not the end, but it's the beginning of eternal life in his presence. And that is something truly to be thankful for and to give God praise and glory for this day. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promises which are sure and trustworthy. And we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who was willing to lay his life down on the cross in order that we may have life and have it to the full in this life and for all eternity. And so, Lord, we are incredibly thankful. And Lord, though we face troubles and difficulties and challenges this day, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us have a spirit of gratefulness, a spirit of thankfulness, even in the midst of struggles and suffering. Because we know that this is only temporary. And we have something far better awaiting us. Eternal life in your presence. 
And so, God, we pray that you will guide us through this day. You will make your face shine before us. And, Lord, you will be glorified through everything we say and do. As we lift high the name of Jesus, in whose mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that you have been encouraged by it and find hope in it. And as we are at the end of another week, it's hard to believe we're at the end of another week, but we are. Um, I just encourage you to not forsake the gathering of God's people on the Sabbath day. And if you are able to, as we are here at Queensway, to gather in person, we encourage you to do so with your local church. Uh, to uh, join in the fellowship of believers in worshiping our Lord. If you're not able to gather in person or if you are not yet comfortable getting together in person, uh, we will be live streaming our service at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning on this YouTube channel, and we invite you to join us there. And also just want to continue to remind you to uh, pray for your local church. Um, and your local church needs your prayer support. And also remember to tithe to your local church. Our tithing is a part of our worship of God, giving thanks for his providence, for his uh, meeting our needs and blessing us abundantly. And so our offerings of our tithes um, is a way of, uh, of us coming before the Lord in worship and praise and thanksgiving for all he has done for us. So Continue to tithe to your local church Lord, uh, so that they can continue to do the work that the Lord has called them to. And so, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. Amen. See you next week, friends. Have a blessed weekend.